about that guy. He's a dick, honestly. I understand there are other kids. I know a lot about her case. I do honestly believe the judge, Judge Knutson, is psychotic. That I have no doubt. I've been in his courtroom. Mm. The guy is absolutely crazy. I mean, I believe that there needs to be a lot of changes in family court as well. Yeah. She asked she could stay with me. Um, she had nowhere else to go. She was scared of David Ruckey. I said, absolutely. So, her closest friend that I don't think anybody has even looked at is Dee Dee. And I don't think anybody, um, Dee Dee. Eva Bold? Eva Bold. Okay. So, anyway, she stayed here for a while. Then she got scared because I had gone down to one of her court hearings and stuff with her. Mm -hmm. She got scared that David was going to be able to figure out where she was at. Okay. And she acted like she was absolutely terrified of this man and that she felt like he would kill her if he had the chance. Mm -hmm. So I introduced her to some friends of mine that never have company, um, Chris Fox and Jeannie Hawk, okay. who were living in Hutch. So I introduced her to Chris and Jeannie. Okay. Um, I don't trust David. One of the reasons I didn't want to give you my name or my number is I don't trust David Ruckey, and I don't trust that he wouldn't come after me just because I was there when his girls were interviewed mm -hmm. or that I was helping Sam in any way, shape, or form. Okay. okay. So on Sunday, this past Sunday, this blogger who has been blogging the story mm -hmm. called me and started asking me questions. I have no idea who this guy even is. Okay. Michael. Broad quote. Yes. And I refused to tell him anything. I just told him I want nothing to do with this. I have not had anything to do with these people in a couple of years, and I want absolutely nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. And he was insistent, and I continued to tell him I want nothing to do with this, and I hung up. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I started, that made me want to dig even further. So I started digging even further. I understand there are other kids. I know a lot about her case. I do honestly believe the judge, Judge Knutson, is psychotic. That I have no doubt. I've been in his courtroom. Mm. The guy is absolutely crazy. I mean, I believe that there needs to be a lot of changes in family court as well. Yeah, and like um, I said, that's, I mean, I, I get Dale Nathan's point. You know, I... Yesterday, I went to law enforcement where I live. They think I have... They think I'm on the right track. Okay. And I asked them what I should do, and they said I should call you. But I told them, like you know, like I said, I told them I don't want my name and number out there for fear of David Ruckey because if he is as crazy as his girls say he is, mm -hmm. then I don't know what he's capable of. So anyway, and I have, there's only one person they know that would pay for that, and that would be Sam. And even when Sam stayed here, she's like, well, what can I do to help you out? Nothing, Sam. I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. She was always buying throwaway phones at Walmart. Yeah, we kind of uh, figured that's been her thing to do. Yes, she buys throwaway phones. She goes to Walmart and buys a throwaway. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, she was just scared that David was going to find her. That was her whole thing when she stayed here. Um, you know, and the I believe the the blogger apparently was at their house, and I think they're trying to pin it on me because they sent him, they gave him my number. Well, um, to be quite honest, uh, I, I know you don't want your name out there, you don't want your phone number out there, but when I talk to Chris and Jean, I'm pretty sure I know who I'm talking to. Yeah, they okay. were more than willing to throw you under the bus. <laughs> it's Lori. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I'm sure they were. Um, like I said, they're claiming they don't know anything, but you know, you're the one that brought them down there, along with Dee Dee. And, yep. You know, you would probably know everything that you know we needed to know, and I just hadn't had a chance to try and come talk to you yet, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, yes, my name is Lori Mooseoff, and if you've talked to them, they probably have given you my number. And yes, I have. I probably know more than anybody, other than where the girls are at. I am like you. I'm, a, you know, I'm an investigator myself, and I know there's two sides to every story. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I've never been able to talk with Sam ever. Uh, I've talked with David quite a bit, obviously, because he's looking for his daughters. But I don't know 
you know, obviously his he's got one side of a story too, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. Yep. You know, it, Dale just seems like, and for for me talking to Dale, I can see the reason why he is telling the story is because he believes very firmly that there's errors in family court, and by this case being publicized, that's what's going to bring up a public outcry to change it. So yep. I, I get his motivation for speaking and talking. You know, I just, I have five kids of my own and four grandkids. Mm -hmm. And I just think that these girls need to come home. You know, and, and maybe neither parent, those girls shouldn't be with either parent. Those girls are going to need a lot of psychological. Oh, I, I agree. If, you know, when crap, they do I locate mean, those girls, they're probably going to end up being, you know, we're almost going to have to make them wards to determine what kind of help they need. Exactly. And you know. then I understand there are other kids. I know a lot about her case. I do honestly believe the judge, Judge Knutson, is psychotic. That I have no doubt. I've been in his courtroom. Mm. The guy is absolutely crazy. I mean, I believe that there needs to be a lot of changes in family court as well. Yeah, and like um, I said, that's, I mean, I, I get Dale Nathan's point, you know, I, you know, officially inside that house. And quite yep. frankly, what I really need to find is the girls. Um, yes. Because, you know, I know talking with Vesta and talking with you, you don't necessarily want to be involved in your, your fears retaliation. When I talk to the girls, I can figure out what happened, you know, how they yep. where they went to, how they went to, and who was helping out, and so on and so forth. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Um, so I, I'm guessing, most likely, the people who are pointing me in the right direction probably won't even have to be brought up. Okay. Is my hope. Um, well, I yeah. But that's, like I said, if I have to, I have to, but out of fear of retaliation, I just, I don't trust either of them. I don't trust Michael. I don't trust David. I mean, I read the articles where, you know, Michael's son went and trashed David's stuff, and it's like, man, I don't want any part of that. No, no, I understand. I do have a concealed and carry and a very large German shepherd, and I'm not scared of a whole lot of anything, no. but I just don't need that in my life. No, and I understand, and I, I want you to know I don't tell anybody, you know, outside of this investigation who's involved or anything like that. Like, when the press calls me, I don't give out names and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, okay. And I actually took all of this to um, our sheriff yesterday and sat down and talked with him. Okay. Showed him everything I have, and uh, he believes that I'm definitely on the right track here. Okay. Did they, they take a report from you or anything or give you a case file number? No, I asked him what I should do, and he said to contact you. Okay. So, yeah, they would have just forwarded it to me anyway if they did take anything. That's what he said, and, and I know him, okay. you know, and I trust him, and I just, I have a hard time trusting a lot. Um, we had some dirty cops here, and our own sheriff was a dirty sheriff. <laughs> I got on board to get our new clean sheriff in. But uh, I just I have a hard time trusting a lot of people because some of the things I've seen and and found through my advocacy work and so I trust our sheriff so I went to him and he said well I don't really know anybody in Lakeville you know and then after talking to Vesta and she said you know you need to call this guy you know and then I talked to our sheriff and he says yeah why don't you go and call this guy okay and let him know. Okay. Well, and I'm going to ask you the same thing I asked Vesta, is if you do hear something that you think I need to know, please feel free to give me a call uh, as soon Absolutely. as possible. And if yep. I do have any questions, I will give you a call. I will try and keep you out of it as much as I can. Okay. Um, obviously, because, you know, like you said, the, there's reasons to not want to be involved, and I get that. Exactly. I understand it. Um, but I need to find these girls, so that's going to no. be my well, goal. My gut tells me that that's where they're at. You're going to find them at a horse ranch in Fergus Falls. Okay. And I have, you know, and one of the things the sheriff said to me yesterday was, have you researched as far as you possibly can without going to Furnace Wells yourself? And I said, yes. I have done everything I could. I even found out where Jeannie and Chris are. I believe Sam is staying with them, you know, in Kimball. Um, just so you know, I think this blogger is, I don't know if you've talked to this blogger at all. I have from time to time. Um, okay. I talked to him Hopefully on Monday. The interesting it. thing is he told me on Monday that he wasn't going to call you. And yeah, he, ironically, he already had. So. He already had. He called me Sunday, 2.54 p.m. I even have it in my notes. Mm -hmm. 
So, yes, he had called me on Sunday. He had tried calling me, I think it was on Friday, and I totally avoided his phone call. Yeah, yeah. And, and then and he, uh, called me on Sunday, and I just told him, I have nothing to say. Yeah. I want nothing to do with any of this. Well, and while I understand the, the press wanting to write their stories and they you know they want to keep interested in, in the case, and I do have to say it, and they have been helpful in, in some ways. Um, one thing that kind of was worrisome to me is on Friday I got a phone call from somebody I talked to in Hutchinson because he was down there and thought I gave you know him their name, and it's like, nope, that wasn't me. I don't know where he got his information from, but I don't give out names. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, that's one thing that worries me a little bit sometimes is like he might jump ahead of me or try and jump to the side. So I appreciate you trying to uh, be cognizant of that. So. Yes. So, well, yeah, and if you have any other questions, like I said, just give me a call. All right. Thanks so much, Lori. I appreciate it. You are welcome. I pray to God you find those girls. I'm sending okay. me both. So, all right. Good luck. All right. Thank you. You bet. Bye. Bye. Honestly. I understand there are other kids. I know a lot about her case. I do honestly believe the judge, Judge Knutson, is psychotic. That I have no doubt. I've been in his courtroom. Mm. The guy is absolutely crazy. I mean, I believe that there needs to be a lot of changes in family court as well. Yeah, and I, 